Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This diagram illustrates mechanisms of edema development. Understanding these mechanisms is helpful to comprehend clinical causes of the symptom. Edema is defined as fluid accumulation in the interstitial space. Blood arrives to the tissue through blood vessels. We have the arterial system get continuous branching until we reach the very small arterioles. Then that give rise to the capillaries. And capillaries are the blood vessels that are in contact with the tissue. And the vessels through which oxygen and nutrient pass to the cells. Also, carbon dioxide and waste products enter the blood, which then drain into the venous system. Some fluid normally pass to the tissue and cannot get back directly to the blood. This extra fluid is not accumulated in the interstitial space, but pass to the lymphatic system which ultimately drain that fluid back to the blood. So, what are the factors that determine how much fluid passes to the tissue? Well, there are two kinds of pressure that play a role. They are the hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure. And also, there is the permeability of the capillaries. Normally, the endothelial cells of the capillary are in contact to each other, preventing much fluid to pass from the blood to the tissue. However, in case of inflammation, chemical mediators are released, promoting contraction of these endothelial cells. And this contraction causes these endothelial cells to shrink. This shrinkage allows the spaces between them between these endothelial cells to contract and to conduct extra amount of fluid to the tissue. That is why inflammation is associated with development of edema. Clinical example of inflammatory condition that might present with edema is cellulitis. Cellulitis is inflammation occurring in the skin, particularly it affect the epidermis and sub cutaneous tissue. Then we have two kinds of pressure that interact to maintain the intravascular space. These pressure are the hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is determined by the amount of water in the blood vessel. So in case fluid is increased in the blood vessels due to any reason the hydrostatic pressure increases. And if the hydrostatic pressure increase, then the extra water will pass to the tissue where there is less hydrostatic pressure. And this passing continues until we reach equilibrium. Examples of conditions in which vascular hydrostatic pressure increases include renal failure, heart failure, and venous obstruction. A major function of the kidney is to, ex to excrete extra amount of fluid. It is function in fluid homeostasis. So, in case of renal failure, we lose this ability. Fluid accumulates in the vascular space, increasing the hydrostatic pressure and edema develops. Also, if we have venous obstruction, fluid will be prevented to pass through. Backflow of blood then to the capillary increases hydrostatic pressure and results in edema. Diseases that may cause venous obstruction include deep vein thrombosis and pelvic tumor. Also, abdominal tumor may obstruct the inferior vena cava resulting in bilateral lower limb edema. The second type of pressure that keeps fluid inside the vascular space is the colloid osmotic pressure, colloid oncotic pressure. This type of pressure is similar to the salt that keeps fluid in its space. You know, if we have high salt in one side of a membrane, 
fluid will be attracted to pass into that side of the membrane. Oncotic pressure does the same, but it does not depend on salt but on proteins. The major intravascular protein is albumin and it is synthesized in the liver. So if we have low albumin due to liver disease, for example, oncotic pressure becomes low and fluid will pass to the interstitium. Causes of hypoalbuminemia include beside liver disease that we discussed, nephrotic syndrome in which protein is lost in the urine and also cause of hypoalbuminemia is malnutrition. Finally, the last cause of edema illustrated in the diagram is lymphatic obstruction. This might be due to parasitic infection such as filariasis.